good morning welcome to understanding ebooks types and possibilities uh, i'm rani zalam a senior technical consultant in the cit and cert uh, i will be guiding you through this presentation understanding ebooks types and possibilities so today we are going to discuss the following topics like uh, what are ebooks benefits of an ebooks how many types of ebooks and what kind of ebooks and crt uses digitization of textbooks why pdfs and why pdfs are useful flip books and why flip books are useful and uh, one of the most important topic is epub uh, and why do we need epub key differences between epub and pdf and uh, qr code and in the end we will do some practical work like uh, we will know how to generate epub and how to generate qr code so let's start what are ebooks ebooks or digital version of printed books can be read on various electronic devices like computers tablets e readers and smartphones they are replicate the traditional reading experience while offering advantages such as portability convenience and accessibility available in formats like pdf epub and mobi ebooks can contain text images and interactive elements their popularity stems from easy access the ability to carry entire libraries and customizable reading preferences the benefits of an ebooks ebooks is beneficial because of its affordability ebooks can be accessed on various devices enabling readers to carry a vast library with them its accessibility ebooks grant access to a wide range of literature including rare and out of print books they also offer features like adjustable fonts for better accessibility cost effectiveness ebooks are cheaper ebooks are cheaper eliminating printing and distribution costs they can be easily updated and distributed without reprinting ebooks provide searchability options ebooks have search functions and interactive features like hyperlink multimedia enhancing the reading experience it is uh, because it is a digital so it is uh, environment friendly ebooks reduce the resource consumption and environmental impact by eliminating the need for paper and physical distribution convenience ebooks can be instantly purchased and downloaded offering immediate access without the needed or physical stores or shipping it is space saving customizability some ebooks readers offer customizable options like adjusting fonts highlighting and allowing readers to personalize their experience how many types of ebooks there are several types of ebooks like pdf that is a portable document format it is closely resemble the layout of a printed book and are commonly used for documents manuals and materials that require a fixed layout pdf ebooks are easily accessible on various devices and they retain the formatting and design of the original documents making them ideal for textbooks and documents with complex layouts another type is epub epub is one of the most important type of uh, ebooks that is electronic publication it is one of the most common ebook formats epubs are highly flexible and can adjust their layout to fit different screen sizes making them compatible with a wide range of e readers tablets and smartphones this supports features such as resizable text adjustable font size and dynamic content making them suitable for various genres including fiction non fiction and academic publications mobi ebooks mobi ebooks are primarily used by amazon 
Kindle devices. They support features similar to EPUB, such as adjustable text and to font sizes. Interactive eBooks. Interactive eBooks offer a more engaging reading experience by incorporating multimedia elements such as audio, video, and interactive graphics. These eBooks are often used in educational materials, children's books, and digital learning resources to enhance reading engagement and understanding. Enhanced eBooks. Enhanced eBooks combine traditional text with multimedia elements such as audio and video to create a more immersive reading experience. They often include additional features like pop-up, annotations, embedded links, and interactive elements. Fixed layout eBooks. Fixed layout eBooks are similar to PDF eBooks in that they preserve the exact layout and design of the print version. They are commonly used for graphic intensive publications, such as comic books, children's books, and illustrated guides, where maintaining the original layout is essential to the reading experience. Now, NCRT uses eBooks. Uh, NCRT uses uh, three kinds of uh, eBooks like PDF, Flipbook, and uh, EPUB. NCRT uses eBooks as a part of its educational resources. These eBooks are available through various platforms, including the Diksha portal, Eparshala portal, Eparshala and Diksha mobile app, NCRT. These eBooks cover a wide range of subjects and are available in multiple languages, including English, Hindi, and Urdu. They are designed to be accessible on multiple devices, making it easier for students and teachers to access textbooks and other learning material digitally. What is our next is digitization of textbooks. Digitization of textbooks refer to the process of converting traditional print textbooks into digital formats that can be accessed and read on electronic devices like computers, tablets, smartphones, e-readers, etc. It involves transforming the content layout and features of the printed textbooks into a digital version that can be viewed and interacted with electronically. Why PDF and why PDFs are useful? PDF are useful because of its uh, consistencies. PDFs keep the documents appearance the same, no matter where you open it, whether on a computer or tablet or a smartphone. PDFs is useful because of its compatibility. Almost all devices and operating systems can open PDF files without needing special software. PDFs is important because of the security. PDFs can be password protected and encrypted, making them secure for sharing sensitive information. It is small in size. It is easy to print. It supports a minimum of multimedia, multimedia like uh, audio, video, or hyperlink buttons, etc. Uh, this is the uh, source URL from where you can access uh, PDF resources, PDF ebook resources from NCRT portals. Now, Philip Books and why Philip Books are useful. Philip Book is a digital version of traditional book where the pages can be flipped or turned as if you are reading a physical book. It often simulates the experience of paging through a real book with animated page turning effects. Philip books are commonly used to present documents, brochures, catalogs, magazines, and ebooks in an engaging, interactive format online. Why Philip books are useful? Philip books are useful because it is easy to read. It gives a familiar feel, making it easy for people to read, just like flipping through a physical book. Interactive. It is interactive. You can add videos, links, animations, making the reading experience more engaging. Accessible from anywhere. Philip books work on computer, tablets, and phones, so you can read them anywhere. Environment friendly. Again, it is a digital version of ebooks, so it is uh, environment friendly. 
this is the source url from where you can access all philip books ebooks from a patshala and cr ebook one of the most important type of ebooks that is electronic publication it is open standard format for digital books and publications it allow ebooks to be read on various devices including e readers tablets smartphones and computers the format is designed to be flexible and reliable means the text can adjust to fit different screen sizes and orientations providing an optimal reading experience epub support a range of features including text images multimedia and interactive elements making it suitable for both simple text based books and complex media rich publications the most recent recent version of epub is epub 3 uh, which is introduced in r2011 it is open source uh, open source software uh, and it support html5 css3 and java script which enabling it a more dynamic and interactive content so now why do we need epub and why ncrt use uh, epub epub is essential for several reasons because it work on many devices epub files can be read on different devices like e readers tablets phones and computer this makes it easy for people to access the same book on whatever device they prefer adjustable text unlike a pdf where the layout stays the same epub lets the text adjust to fit the screen whether you are reading on a big tablet or a small small phone the text will decide to make reading easier it provide interactive features epub can include things like videos audios and link making it more than just print text this is especially useful for educational books or interactive stories accessible for everyone epub support features that help people with disabilities like screen readers and text that can be read aloud making ebooks available to a wider audience easy for publishers publishers can create one epub file that work on all kind of device so they don't have to make different version for each platform now we can see the differences between epub and pdf layout flexibilities epub uh, provide flow reflowable layout means the text adjust to fit the screen size and orientations providing a better reading experience on a different devices on the other hand uh, a pdf uh, provide a fixed layout where the content is locked in place like a printed page so it does not adjust to different screen sizes device compatibility epub is designed for e readers tablets smartphones and computers it adapts to various screen sizes making it more versatile while pdf can be viewed on most devices but the fixed layout often make reading difficult on a smaller screen like phones or smartphones it is interactive uh epub supports interactive features like hyperlinks videos audio and animations making it suitable for multimedia rich content pdf is a limited interactive while it can include hyperlinks and basic multimedia it is not as flexible or features rich as epub file size epub generally is smaller in size due to its reflowable content which is more efficient in terms of storage while pdf often larger because it retain the exact layout including high resolution images and graphics so it is sometimes larger in size accessibility if i provide better yes yeah 
Sorry to tell me. So we are on its accessibilities. IPA provide that accessibility options such as text to speech, adjustable font size, and the screen reader compatibilities, making it easier to use for people with disabilities. While PDF is less accessible because of its fixed layout, it can make it harder to interact with for users relying on assistive technologies. Editing and printing. For editing and printing, PDF is ideal for documents that need to be printed or shared in a consistent format as the layout remains unchanged. While EPUB is more difficult to print and less suited for documents that need to be printed exactly as a design. NCRT ebooks available on the following places. You can access PDF version resources on NCRT official websites. You can access ebooks, e resources, and uh, energized textbooks on Diksha platform, Diksha uh, portals, and its mobile apps. And for flip books and ePubs, you can access ePartshala portal and mobile app. Now we can see how to develop ePub. And what is the requirement to develop of EPUB? What software requirement? EPUB involves several steps depending on your content and the tools you choose to use. I'll guide you. First, first step is you need to prepare your content like text, images, audio, video, and whatever your content. Next is next step is install and EPUB creation tools. In NCRT, we use the Sigil software. It is an open source and free software. It allows you to create and edit EPUB files. Now, how to use Sigil? You can download Sigil from the Sigil official website sigilebook.com a link is available here first uh, install and open sigil next step is, step is uh, create a new file and import your text and images and format them using sigil interface next is save the file as an epub Here is the user interface of a Sigil software after your installation. When you open the Sigil software, you will see the, uh, the user interface like this. This is the window of a Sigil. Uh, on the top, here is a toolbar. And on, on the left side, is a, there is a menu of Sigil. On the type of practical, we can see this. So let me show you one. Flipbook uh, PDF file, APA file. Yeah. This is the EPUB file, EPUB ebooks file. It provides reflowable content. You can see the content is reflowable. Yes. You can the EPUB is auto adjust its content like this, whatever screen size or device you have, it will reflowable and adjustable on any 
screen sizes and orientations. So now we can see how to develop EPUB. To develop EPUB, we need a schedule software, as I told you, and I told you how to install this uh, schedule software. This is this is the user interface of Sigil. You have to basic knowledge of HTML and the CSS to develop a Sigil because it is based on HTML5 and the CSS3. Let me show you. For example, this is a heading. We can change it from here, H2, H3, H4, up to H6. Here is a CSS file where all the CSS for all the tags like body, tag, body, heading tags or paragraph, paragraph tags, I wrote here. So if you know the basic of a CSS, you can write CSS here and you can create your You can create your EPUB file. You can insert your you can insert your images from the just right click and insert file. And you can browse your images from here. This is the cover page of EPUB. It is also reflowable or auto adjustable like this. It will work on any screen sizes. On the background, it is a, it is right on HTML. So if you know the HTML code or how to write HTML code, you can easily develop the an EPUB. So now we can see the energized textbooks. An energized textbook is a digital textbook that has been enhanced with interactive elements, multimedia content, and additional resources to make learning more engaging and effective. These textbooks go beyond the traditional printed format by integrating videos, animations, quizzes, and links to online resources directly with the textbooks. NCRT energized textbooks. These are digital version of the textbooks provided by the NCERT. They include QR code that link to the additional digital content like videos, animation, and practice exercises available on platforms like Diksha Club portal and Iparshala portal. Now, QR code. QR code is a type of a barcode that can be scanned using a smartphone or other devices with a camera. It contains information like text, URL, or other data, which the device can quickly read and interpret. A QR code is a two-dimensional barcode that is, that is readable by smartphones. QR code is a quick response code. Here is some example of a QR code. Why QR code are useful? QR code are useful because of its quick response. QR code allows user to instantly access websites, videos, and contact or other information without typing anything. Just scan the code 
and you are directed to the content. It is easy to use. Anyone with a smartphone can scan a QR code, making it a simple and effective tool for sharing information. Versatile. It is versatile. QR code can be used for a wide range of purposes, such as linking to a website, downloading an app, making a payment, or accessing Wi-Fi, etc. Space saving. It is space saving because instead of printing, instead of printing long URL or detailed instructions, a QR code can store all the information in a small square images like this. Uh, it is important because uh, we can track the QR code. We can track how many people scan their QR codes, providing valuable insights into customer engagement. Safe and it is safe and contactless. QR codes are especially useful in situations where contactless interactions are preferred, such as during the COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, we all use a QR code for menus, payments, or check ins, and many other places. Now we can see how to generate QR code, and we will do a practical at how to generate QR code. <clears throat> there are several steps to generate QR code. To generate QR code, we need a Google Sheet. Just to open Google Sheet. And uh, start, enter your data and to populate your data, and fill the columns name as following, like the chapter name, chapter title, domain URL code. You can change these. You can change these column name as per your convenience or as per your requirement. What is the domain URL? We have to write domain name. Domain name is that uh, like uh, where you store your data. It could store your data. It is a location, it is a path location, your data, where your data is stored. <clears throat> yeah. This is a chapter, you can see here, uh, chapter, uh, chapter number, chapter title, domain URL, code, complete URL, and the QR code. You can change these uh, column name according to your uh, project requirement or according to your uh, convenience. To generate QR code, you just need to generate QR code, you just need the domain URL or location of your data. It could be a, it could be a YouTube URL or a drive URL or a, or a website URL. Where your data is stored, you can use that URL. But code. Uh, this is the code for NCRT textbooks. NCRT textbooks. Complete URL. Complete URL. Complete URL is a that that I have to need these two columns, column column C and column D. We we need to we need to concatenate these two columns. So to join these two columns, we have a formula that is concat. Concat means join two or more than two things in a series or in a row. That is concatenated. So here we need uh, column D. That is that is domain URL and column D. That is called. Uh, we need to concatenate these two columns in a single, in a single row or in a in a series. So we need this formula. This formula. Now next step is generate QR code. To generate QR code, we need a API, uh, which is uh, we need to we need API. And this API need to apply in this in this column. From where you can download, from where you can access this API. This is the source URL of API. You can access 
and get the API from this URL or just go to Google and type uh, QRIC kit API and open first link, then copy the API and apply on the QR code column. Apply here. You can apply here and uh, QR, code will QR code will generate. Now you can like this. Let's learn how to generate QR code. Let's do a practical. Let me open the sheet. This is uh, so. This is the Google Sheet. Let me share.
sorry, uh, sorry to inconvenience. Uh, now we can see how to generate a QR code. We have a Google Sheet, and uh, here is a, a some metadata like chapter number, chapter title, domain URL, which is your uh, which is which is the storage where your data is uh, stored or saved. This is a code URL and complete URL. So we have to create a complete URL. So we have to create a complete URL. We need to concatenate these two, column C and column D. To concatenate these columns, we need to write a formula like concat, C-O-N-C-A-T. Yeah. And we need to enter these values. Value is C. C. And because column name is C. And its row is third. One, two, three. So we have we need to write three column. D because a code uh, Column D have code, so we need to write D and its row number three. Yes, with this formula, it this formula generate the complete URL. It concatenate it concatenate these two columns into single. You can see uh, you can see column C and column D together here. Now you can just drag now you can just drag you can generate by drag and you also can generate these complete URL by individually with the formula. Now we have to uh, we, we see how to generate QR code. As I told you, to generate QR code, we need an API. So we need an API. I copied an API URL here. You have to just paste your API column and uh, change according to the uh, according to the column's name. It is loading, and you can see a QR code is generated. If you have a large amount of data, so you can just drag drag down. And it will generate for all data. Like this. So you just to generate your QR code, you just need to open. You just need to open. Google Sheet and populate your data.
to generate from there you can get api you can get api from this url qricit.com or just go to google and type qricit api uh, it will show some links then you need to open first link then copy the api and just copy and apply on this qr code column and it will generate your QR code. Let me show you. This is the QRI kit website. Open this website, which we'll is type on Google. And this is the API. You can get API from here. Just copy from here. You can copy from here and paste into in your uh, Google sheet. Paste this into this field. And this API will generate to our code for you. Any other questions, doubt? How to generate API code? Please explain once again. Sir, to generate an API code, you just need to go Google and type QRIC kit API and go to the website. Go to website and go to this website and just copy uh, this uh, copy this API from here and you can paste this in your uh, QR code column. It will generate your API. QR code. Yes, API. The question is API is common for all QRs. Yes, API is common for all QR code. From this API, you can generate any QR code. Next question is how to get a domain URL and code. A domain URL is that where your data is stored. It could be a website, website link. It could be a, a YouTube link or a drive link. It could be a drive link. 
and uh, code. Uh, to generate a QR code, you don't need to uh, code. Uh, it is a, just a, for example, because it is a chapter. Because it is the NCRT books, uh, a chapter code. So you don't need to generate a code for API. You just, you just need domain URL or your location's URL. Please explain code column. Yes, to generate, uh, to generate QR code, we just need domain URL and API. It will generate your QR code. Any other doubt? Any other doubts, sir? Ravi, sir, there is one question. Please explain Hi. QR code column. QR code column. Okay. for QR code column. But to generate a QR code, we just need an API. Just apply API and uh, you will generate the QR code. And you will get API from QRIC kit website. You can just go their website, go that website and you can uh, copy your copy API and paste in your QR code column. It will generate your QR code. Sir, there is one question that can we create QR for our own uh, creative content? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can create QR for your for your content. You just need domain URL or look for your your uh, data URL where your data is stored. It could be a YouTube or Drive or any other thing or website thing. Let me show you again.
we just need this API. And paste in QR code column. And change the column according to your column name. Mine is D3, which is the domain URL, and E3, uh, which is a complete URL. Just click and it will generate QR code. Now you can drag for all columns. This is how we can generate QR codes. Sir, you, uh, you can see, you can see on the top of the sheet, column A, B, C, D, E, and F. So my domain URL is the column C. So that's why I wrote there column C. And my compute URL is column E. So that's why I wrote there column E. And three is B. So column D is not required for you because it is a NCRT attached books unique code. But tip one 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 five two is is a book code and CH zero one is a chapter code. So if you, you so we are in a NCRT. We use this code, uh, Unicode for the generation of a QR code. If you don't have books, so you don't need this, uh, this, this code. Or you can, you can, you can add this for your content. You can create on your own. It can be on anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, or A, B, C, D, anything. Okay. If you need your own content, then you don't need uh, this code. Sir, you can get URL where your data is storage. You can use that URL or location where your data is stored. Any other doubts or question?
Sir, there is one question. How can we get URL for our own content? Then a URL, get the URL is where you store your data. It could be, you can, if you store your data in Google Drive, then you, you can just copy your drive link and paste here. Or, or it is on YouTube, so you can use YouTube YouTube link, your videos link. Or maybe it is a, it is a website, so you can use its website link. See, there are multiple questions and uh, they are asking multiple questions continuously. So that means uh, all the participants uh, are trying to do the same, whatever they have learned in the session. So that's great that all of you are participating and asking. And you can continue your questions in the WhatsApp group, as we said earlier, because uh, there is a limited time and we need to take another session on so what we can do is we can take your questions in the WhatsApp group. All of you are already there in the WhatsApp group. You can ask whatever queries you have and Mr. Ramiz will answer all of them. So I would like to uh, thank Mr. Ramiz for giving such an informative session and for, um, for uh, sparking so much curiosity in their mind that they have started working right now and they are trying to get to know of it. So thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen.